air exercise. So the following aspects will be looked at in flight. We're going to look at the individual effects of the primary and secondary effects of controls. We're also going to look at coordinated control of the aircraft. So when we're rolling, looking at the use of using rudder to counter the effect of yaw. We're also going to look at the effects of airspeed and slipstream, the use of flap, use of trim, the throttle and the mixture control. And towards the end of the lesson, once you're gaining a little bit more experience, a little bit more confidence, we'll look at combining all of those exercises together into control and coordinated flight. So as a pilot, it's always good to try and strive to be the best airman or airwoman as you possibly can be. We also use the threat and error management model to keep us safe from any accidents or incidents in flight. We use that model to determine a threat or an error and how to manage that threat and error. For example, there could be a bird in the way. The threat is the bird, the error is flying and hitting that bird. How we manage that risk is we might wait until that bird has cleared the airspace or we might turn around the bird. So we have some points that we need to discuss for our first lesson. It's always important that we maintain an effective scan or lookout and that's going to increase your situational awareness. Your situational awareness is where you perceive yourself in space and time, where you're going to see yourself in the future in that same space and time situation. It's always good to keep your eyes outside of the aircraft and see where you're going so you don't hit anything. It's always good to have smooth and positive control movements. This is a good threat and error management point of view. Smooth and control inputs mean your instructor's going to be a lot happier than if you're very jerky on the controls. It's like when you get a dodgy Uber and they're very heavy on the accelerator and the brake and you're constantly being moved around in the aircraft unintentionally. It's exactly the same feeling. If you smooth and control on the inputs, your instructor's going to be a lot happier. Be aware of the considerations as well. It's uh, environmental factors, external factors yourself. You're new to flying, so we're all a threat as we learn to fly. How are you going to manage that is you get an instructor as well. Now the handover and takeover procedure here at RMIT is very important. It's a good threat and error management and a human factors perspective as well. It's always important to know who's in control of the aircraft and who's flying the aircraft. So we employ a handover and takeover technique. When the instructor wants to demonstrate something to you or show you something, they will take over controls and you will say handing over. Once we've finished demonstrating, we'll then say handing over and you say taking over. At no point throughout the flight or any flights here at RMIT through your flying career will you get the opportunity to take over control from the instructor. If you do that, it'll be an immediately reportable incident to the chief pilot.